Hello. Hit record, Alan. Yes, I did it. Guys, I did it. I hit record. <laughs> Guys, I hit record. You're killing Good me. Good job. Alan. I hit record. <laughs> <laughs> How much sleep did you get last night? Enough My to hit record. On this morning. It's a really good start to the podcast, man. <laughs> I I slept enough to hit record, guys. Welcome to the Gaijin Guys. Stream starts. Guys, we, I'm sorry. We've been set up for a full 15 minutes just staring at the screen. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this time was very important. To, yeah, uh, it was very important. We're having some... Because uh, we got to do three reactions after this. <laughs> we had to mentally prepare. Fuck. Oh, yeah. Trust. Yeah, we got three yeah, reactions. for everything We're... tonight so I can fly the fuck out of here tomorrow don't worry today yeah. is a little bit shorter of a podcast guys because we got a lot of stuff to do where are you flying to tomorrow right dc oh mm. Mm. that's where the next tomorrow, show is my trip mm. begins yeah so first things first we're gonna piss off champ in the morning because he seemed pretty upset when i brought up this topic the other day it's gonna be great <laughs> I don't know what guys. I don't what even know what topic about? he's talking about. He's very he's very <laughs> livid when I brought up the whole Guns N' Roses thing. <laughs> we all you love remember that? Champ. You're, you're like, I got some words about that. <laughs> I didn't say if they were positive or negative. Though. Maybe not. <laughs> no. you, you, you made the face. If anybody that watched the one where I was on the plane podcast <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, right way. No. Well, I was just realizing that I should probably pee before we start. <laughs> Bro, oh, the shoot. timer is done. It's <laughs> too late. Yep, oh. Welcome to the Guys You Guys podcast where Wave needs to pee immediately <laughs> when we start. Oh, come on, yeah. man. <laughs> it's fine. I, I, Go pee. I'm we'll, we'll wait for Go you. Ahead, we got you. Go we'll pee. Wait. Oh, okay. Hold down the fort, guys. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey, Ch- <laughs> I thought Dude. he just fell down. <laughs> I, thought, I thought he fell into his chair after he got up. Good morning, okay, everybody. Uh, Champ, how was your what's week? What's going on? How my week, week has Champ? been fantastic, my friends. I, I I don't really have anything to talk about when it's with that's it. Good. That's went good. To, went to went to haunted nice. house last night with my son and took to, to and his girlfriend and stuff. It's pretty cool down to Brighton Asylum. All so right. that was good times. It's in an asylum. <laughs> yeah, Jeez. it isn't in an asylum. Did they set uh, up anything, or did you just walk through it? <laughs> oh, <it's> scary. <laughs> uh, I've actually I've done the asylum thing where they don't set anything up, and that that is way scarier, in my opinion. Like oh, the yeah. ones where they're just like, "This place is haunted. Go ahead and walk through," and you're like, "This is terrifying." Like just existing in there. <laughs> this one was like a fully set up, like it's like one of the biggest haunted houses in New Jersey okay. type of thing, and. Uh, you know, people with masks on yelling at you with chainsaws and shit like that. So yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah, good shit. Nice. We got a big uh, in. Uh, oh, it's just just dope. in the Michigan. There's a place where they have a huge haunted house and they have like five buildings. It's all different kinds of horror things, themes. And you go in and it's pretty. It's pretty fun. I like shit like that, man. I like the scary shit. Someone has their uh, feedback coming back in, or. It's bouncing back, I think, because you wave. I don't hear anything. You're extra noisy. We can, and he's not talking now. I yeah, wave. Oh, <laughs> I had the podcast playing on my phone when I was being oh, okay. so. Okay. When I came it back, it was going into my mic. <laughs> sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I'm worried because right. Ryan. I'm worried because Ryan can never hear this stuff. <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> How was your week, Ryan? It was uh, it, it was okay. I uh, recovered from my trip. A little stressful, a little stressful that trip, but uh, it was still awesome. So I kind of chilled out, put out a. I did record a couple videos. I still got to put one out, but not bad. I'm nice. doing okay. Looking forward to the next week. You seem tired. <laughs> I'm very fucking tired. <laughs> I went to a party last night and I drank a bottle and a half of sake and. That's not good right now. <laughs> how about you? How about you, Wave? How you doing, man? I'm well. My sickness is coming back a little bit, but otherwise, I'm good. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out quick to someone that sent me the stuff from the pre-US Okijis in Japan. 
Oh, that's awesome. Some of the Good. VIP pack stuff. Nice. And it's, like, completely cool. different than the U.S. pack stuff. So, like, thank you so much to whoever sent this to me. You don't know <laughs> like, who sent it to you? There was, there was no, like, note in the thing. It was just the stuff. So, oh, wow. thank you. And let me know if you want to. <laughs> you are. <laughs> so. Cool. That is really cool, man. I heard that, like, all the things are different at each show, like a different postcard or whatnot, if I'm not oh, mistaken. Oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. postcards. Mm -hmm. What were your postcards like? Um, I I gave mine to a fan. I can't remember. Um, mine were like this. They were, oh. No, we had the, the – it was a fo the photo shoot from the uh, influencer shoot. Oh, nice. The, in the rock quarry. Do you get those at every show? Yeah, you get them out of every show, the I think. VIP package. Yeah, if you got the yeah. VIP package. Uh, <clears throat> but I ain't rich enough for that shit, bro. <laughs> no, I, I'm not going to lie. Like, thanks to the people that got us the VIP pack. Didn't, yeah. I really appreciate <laughs> Me it. Me neither. Thanks. Yeah, I, pa like, I passed it on. Thanks to other people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks to God, every, well, everyone. And then I did pass it on to a fan that couldn't get the stuff also. So yeah. if you guys are That's awesome, man. near me and you guys don't get it. But it's really cool to get a beanie and um well for us we got like a beanie and a card and the pass. I don't know if they're passing out a beanie at every show. But I'm gonna keep the one in New York for sure. <laughs> Cause that's gonna nice. be cold. I'm like, I'm coming back to cold weather. Dude, you really? <laughs> like right now it's over seventy here. It's like summer's coming back. Right now it's yeah, beautiful it's really outside. Too, too. This is my favorite season. I fucking love autumn like so much. So like Me everything's too. like turning colors. I'm looking out the window right now, it's like fucking color leaves everywhere. It's like perfect time to be in upstate New York. What? It's so pretty. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, um, it's good to be back to normal with you hosting, Alan. <laughs> yeah, it feels weird. <laughs> I, I feel really weird. Let me plug the Ethernet. I just realized I was on Wi-Fi. All right, cool. But um, what was I gonna say? Oh. My week was good. I mean, so far, I didn't get sick, so I can't complain. Um, but I just have flight issues again for the third time in a row, which really sucked. And I think everyone froze. Oh, there's Third everyone. time? Third time, yeah. I got stuck at the airport. So I could actually have done that whole stream with you guys, which really sucked. Um, I promise, guys, I'm getting out my L.A. video out. I just haven't had time. I've just been crazy. Got here. My family, of course, doesn't let me do anything so i was like <laughs> i was like sitting there editing everyone's like screaming my household is here it's crazy everyone's like talking 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 you think i talk a lot it's worse <laughs> i've become quiet very quick <laughs> man you must have a good insulation in that room yeah it's amazing so um my mom's husband is uh half chinese half german would have would have mixed but uh his uh, grandma, his mom had passed away, and it's filled with all of her stuff, and it's all like solid wood cabinets and stuff. So, oh, anyway, dang. Guys, it's pretty crazy looking. So, the yelling doesn't go through the walls? Yeah, no, it's like <laughs> it's because they have this extra padding on everything, like that's extra layers on the wall. So, oh, so Chinese? yeah, so what the hell? Japanese better look. It's, cr it's crazy. Wow, yeah. And then, um, but he has this whole setup here. So it's like all this wood is like handcrafted and everything. It's fucking crazy. Nice. Uh, yeah. Nice. So I'm hiding in this room to do record videos. <laughs> um, Sweet. Yeah. Overall, good week, guys. Good week. Um, keeping up with the news stuff. We had a lot of exciting news uh, this week. Jeez. So much stuff happening. New baby metal, and I'm gonna react to that song today, guys. I'll get that up video up today. I know oh, everyone's sweet. been asking me. I still haven't. Oh, you haven't heard yet. Divine Attack yet? I've, I've heard 45 seconds of it, honestly, and I already love how it sounds. And I'm like, fuck, I need to, I need to wait. I need to wait. <laughs> Keep forgetting to do that. So, but I'm gonna check it out. I can't wait. So they have our Chinese stuff and random katana thrown on top of a counter. <laughs> is it is <laughs> really? Is there a katana? Where? Oh yeah, there is a katana. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Uh, I should ask. That room is that. a melting pot. Yeah, it's a random katana. It's funny because like my my family's Sicilian, so like 
like everything else Obviously. is all like Italian and Sicilian esque <clears throat> out there. <laughs> Very, and and then in here there's like just random room full of Chinese stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Alan is Asian guy after all. <laughs> That's why I, was, I, was, I, was, I I took a video in front of that the other day. I'm like, people are gonna be like, "What the hell?" <laughs> you mean you're not a real? Never mind. <laughs> Say <Yeah>. it. <laughs> all right. Well, let's get let's jump into news. Let's start with the very first uh, thing: band made because we have tours going on and yes. Uh, I don't even think we've talked about the LA show yet, did we? Not we really, did man. Not not really. Um, Somebody mentioned in one of my videos, they're like, hey, what'd you think of the band? You haven't really said anything. It's like, Jesus, that's all I've been thinking about. <laughs> I thought maybe I said something about it. <laughs> hey, yeah. you read my mind. <laughs> Say those thoughts out loud, man. <laughs> yeah. I, w well, I guess we did kind of talk about, yeah, if they didn't watch the podcast, then they probably didn't hear. What, I mean, <laughs> you go first, Ryan, if you want to talk about talk about that real quick I'll, I'll refrain from bitching about what i've been bitching about the whole time oh uh, the phone as far as the band goes seeing them live was it was it was just inc incredible like uh mainly my my best you know what i could see was psyche and miku and actually akane she has a drum set up so you can actually see her which is really nice so and konami and misa are way off to the side so i could Kind of, I had better visuals of, of Psyche and EQ and seeing them, what they put into it while they're playing, seeing that it's like, it's not easy shit to do. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, when you hear it, it just, you, you assume you, you musicians are just, just do what they do. And it's not that difficult thing. And then you see Psyche like really working to hit everything. And she's putting a lot into it. And Miku is rock starring the hell out of her guitar. And you know, when she's singing, she's singing hard. So it's, it was uh, I want to say just confirmation of how hard they worked. It was so cool to see and hear how just how great they were, and just I was blown away, man. I was want I was gonna say it's kind of like what um, Wave said. Wave mentioned this the last podcast that we had, and the person that impressed me the most, just like Wave, was was Psyche. Like I couldn't believe the stage yeah. presence. That made me an instant fan, like even of her, just even more so. Like I already enjoyed her singing after a while, like because when I first heard her sing, like it didn't, it took a little bit to grow on me. And now I absolutely love it. Uh, it was just because that's how different her voice is for that style of music. And once you once you get over that fact, it's amazing, you know. And um, that's what's happened to me in the past couple of years. So seeing her live was just fucking crazy. And then when I put my phone down for the second half. It was just like surreal just having her in front of me and that was just insane <laughs> like, i still yeah. can't believe that and i have a moment that was captured i think this was in dallas to make us all thoroughly jealous um mr rock and roll got called out by miku um yeah. on stage i thought that was, i thought that was pretty cool very excited yeah. for him man no it's yeah she she yeah. mentioned mentioned youtubers in general and then they yeah. then like they saw him so that's pretty pretty freaking cool man that's i commented amazing. on that because like him. obviously insanely jealous but also like you gotta appreciate his style for the fact that no matter what language someone speaks they can see <laughs> yeah. like his his passion and his uh enthusiasm for the music yeah come through you know you know with mr rock and roll like i I feel like I was wrong initially when I watched his reaction because, like, at first I was like, I couldn't believe that somebody would be that like excited. But then, you know, over over the years, I always forget, like, man, people are so different all around, and you never know how an actual person like. And then after a while, I realized I was like, no, that's just him. That's just how he is. Like, even if you can't fathom it, because <laughs> I remember when I first watched his videos, I was like, this can't be real. He can't be this excited for every single song, but no, there's people like that, believe it or not, you know? Yeah. And I was, mean, I'm sure that's how Ryan felt when he met you in person. Yeah. He's like, he's, <laughs> Your like, energy. he's like, wow, is Ellen really this fucking hyper? Yeah. <laughs> Have you seen uh, somebody get more hyper as they get more, the more tired they are? <laughs> I tap into like this crazy reserve. I, I don't know how to explain it. Like I just second wind. I don't. It's not even a second win. It's like I just, uh, 
I, I do this thing where I'm just like, just pull out energy. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, nice. I never start with energy, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're just coasting. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows what's wrong with me? But anyways, let's check out this video real quick. <clears throat> Batman, the action movie. Is the original sound now? No, sorry. Turning it on. Watch Misa come over and point to. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Dude, I just about pass out. That's so cool. Yeah, that's that really is. cool. I'm very happy for him, man. Like he's been doing reactions uh, even way before us. You know, I think before Ryan. I mean, before Champ and I. I think because it's like those initial wind of reactors that came in. So it's really cool. Just uh, you know, he's been doing it for a long time. <clears throat> yeah. And they get that recognition is fucking awesome. So shout out to you, Mr. Rock and Roll. It's awesome. Uh, and. <laughs> So going back to the bandmate thing that I want to talk about. So we have Guns N' Roses tour. Um, well, not well. Yeah, Guns N' Roses going on tour, Japan tour, and bandmate is joining them. Uh, this is, was my thoughts on it. I'm just gonna play this quick snippet of this video, and I know Champ has some stuff about it. I'm really excited to hear what he has to say because he teased it on Thursday, but he apparently completely forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give Champ a consolation prize for uh, not being at a bandmate show yet. I feel bad. I know. He had to watch that video <laughs> of nice. him getting announced. Three weeks in a row of us just rubbing it in. <laughs> so as you guys... It's all good, man. I got this week. This week is what it's all about for me. Yeah. All right, man. So we got... Uh, what's up? We got and bandmate. And this is going to be on November 6th at Saitama Super... Re so I don't... I didn't see any more information. It was just opening that one show which is going to yeah. be on the six and then um i don't who knows what could happen after that so what i really i guess we'll just play this real huh? quick and that but. is really exciting news in my opinion because it just means more people are going to hear them a lot of people know the name guns and roses and whether you want to believe it or not you know bandmate is not as known as guns and roses <laughs> So I think any publicity <laughs> is going to help the band no matter what. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Do you think this is a good thing? Do you think this is a bad thing? I don't know why you would, but let me know why you would. I do agree that eventually, maybe, not maybe, they're going to be probably bigger than Guns N' Roses, fingers crossed, but they might not be. I don't know. Nobody really knows, but it doesn't matter because the point is that this is good no matter which way you look at it. Rather be bad or good. I know the band has a horrible reputation. The band being Guns N' Roses. Bad publicity can be good in certain situations. I do think it can be bad in some situations. But anyways, let's see what the cesspool of Twitter has to say about this. I love this. From the local Gaijin guy. <laughs> That's where I wanted to stop it. Right on Ryan's comment. <laughs> 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 set to be followed eventually by old American band Guns N' Roses. I loved it. I was on Twitter looking at the comments. So like the first one was Ryan's. So like perfect. So Ryan, do you want to tell us more about your? What do you think about it, man? Let's we'll start with uh, you, man. I I really think. <sighs> so for me, Guns N' Roses was a huge, huge part of my my. The first loves of music was Guns N' Roses. I remember when I heard what the fuck was it? Welcome to the Jungle when it came out on the radio back when our the main radio station on here actually played rock and roll and stuff. And I was like, asked my brother, who is this? Who is this band? Like I, you know, first time I heard him was on the radio. Welcome Jungle and it was incredible. And uh so they're a huge part of my musical journey. Listened to them many, many times. Now it's kind of <laughs> kind of sad i guess <laughs> but i'm glad they're still playing uh there was like a 20 year weird area with guns and roses that was kind of even worse with 
Chinese democracy and all that bullshit. But uh, I think it's great, man, because they they what they scheduled one show and it sold out pretty quick, I believe. So they mm-hmm. scheduled another one, and then oh, they shit. so they I really think you know who's going to pull in some people, and you know they called out a bandmate. And yeah, they could the other, called anybody else, right? I mean, what's it the other band? Something else. rodeo on the first day. Remember. There's another band playing the same night as Bandmade. Oh, okay. But down down rodeo. I'm not sure if that's. What I, it is. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm sure somebody will look it up. Pop it up. Or, I think it's great though, man, because they loudness. I mean, how, how's it going to be bad? But that's Grand the other rodeo. day. Loudness is the other day, guys. Yeah, Grand Rodeo. Grand Rodeo. So. I don't know, man. I don't think it's going to be bad at all. I don't know. I don't know. I think it's like, eh. go ahead. I say like, if they were playing around here now, I don't know if I'd go see him now. <laughs> I don't know. Cause I've seen some video and heard Axel sing and it's like, eh. <laughs> but, you know, I they, would, they gotta be a big draw, dude. I would go to it just to say that I was at a Guns N' Roses, Guns yeah. Roses show, but my issue with it is like it doesn't have, does it still have Slash in it? Like, yeah, or Duff McKay? They're all I back together. I think, I think they're like all back. Yeah, right? except Izzy. Izzy's not back, but I think everybody else is. Well, oh, yeah, is, is Matt Sorum playing? Izzy was still? Izzy was good. Um, who they who they got playing in his place? I don't know. Yeah, no idea. Mm-hmm. I don't like I mentioned like. It's definitely we're in a weird time of music though, so it's not going to work like it did in the '80s, and because no. people have access to so much music, so it's going to be really hard to, you know, funnel it down to certain bands like it was in the '80s. You know, there it was very tunneled down to those videos. Well, like I said in my video, Guns N' Roses was really different for its time. <laughs> like it yeah, was different. Yeah. That was oh, yeah. like nobody heard anything like that. It was like almost like against the grain because of how like rigid it was compared to all the hair metal bands even though they had some glamour to what they were doing but it's just way different than everything so that's why i have to give them props i mean they still they they still were amazing and slash is like one of my favorite guitarists ever and like i've learned so much from just learning his guitar licks and izzy's um those two yeah i have a current lineup um axel duff slash Dizzy was part of the Easier Illusion albums. He joined them. Dizzy Reed, uh, Richard Fortis, rhythm and and lead guitar. So he yeah. must be doing uh, Izzy's Izzy's place. Frank Fair is drums. Then Melissa Reese is on uh, synths and keys. Yeah, I mean this nice. is exciting because Guns N' Roses is a is a household name. You know, yeah. everyone knows yeah. who Guns N' Roses is, and they're playing at a venue of 33,000 people. Yeah, dude. That's which so... is, I mean, compare that to the venues that Bandmates playing on their U.S. tour, that's astronomical. And, you know, a lot of people that are fans of Guns N' Roses are the same type of demographic that are appreciating Bandmate now, you know? So, yeah, so I think it's like think... a perfect situation for them. When, um, I think, when I think of Guns N' Roses, I think of the first videos I saw at Paradise City. Huge, huge crowd iconic and everything when i saw it then i thought that's that's what it is to be a cool band like everything they did and that's how they've been doing it for years like i didn't know i just learned actually when i was talking to uh uh joe from fox the other day he said oh yeah that was their when they were opening for bands is when that video was shot I'm like what that was them opening for a huge a band that had sold out a huge stadium which is what's going on for bandmate right now exactly so that it's huge for them that's my my biggest takeaway from this is it's going to be great for bandmate they can get footage of them in front of thirty thousand people and you're i mean if you're a fan of guns N' Roses, there's no way you hear them and you're and you don't come away like fuck that's a badass band you know absolutely that's that's what i'm thinking man like i think it's just good overall it's just weird i just i'm not with the comments that say like gnr's trash and all that stuff like that's the part that kind of like no, they weren't. <laughs> they yeah. they were like did have a slew of multiple horrible days in a row and gave them the bad reputation when yeah. when but I mean eighties was like just a that. slew <laughs> of multiple years in a row. Years. Multiple years. Years. Bad yeah. promotion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bad promotion over many years. And that's what killed it. And it's unfortunate because imagine if they that didn't happen. You know, but who knows? Um Chan, what do you think, man? 
I think that ultimately, anytime you get to play in front of 30,000 people, it's an upside. Uh, I Guns N' Roses is probably my favorite rock band of all time, pre the, me starting this channel. Yeah. Uh, use the To Use Your Illusion tracks. I even had the fucking Spaghetti Incident album, bro. Like that, that trash yeah. cover album that they did. <laughs> yes, <bro>. And... <laughs> uh i i they were you know i i basically molded my entire appearance after axel rose for like five straight years in my really? uh, Still in, yeah in my early pictures yeah, i'm sure but you're not gonna see them <laughs> uh, <laughs> come on you know, back when back when i had the hair down to my shoulders and i was rocking the flannels all the time i just wanted to be axel rose okay, man. someone's like, got to photoshop that now it makes it's sense because the cool bandanas. You know, he has bandanas. I see it. I see it. Where, that's, Champ. where do you think I got it from? There Champ. it is, right there. Boom. <laughs> there Secrets go. revealed. Nice. <laughs> Camp origin revealed. Um, <laughs> I, I. It's tough for me, man, because I had more faith in them than I think most people had in them because they were like my favorite, right? Like yeah, I really, yeah. really stuck it out with them longer than I think most other people were willing to stick it out with them. I was excited when Chinese democracy came out, like I was legitimately. <laughs> yeah. I was still ready. Like I was like, okay, man, like this is one of the greatest bands of all time. In my opinion, they, I'm going to give them as many chances as they want. After 25 years of feeling disappointed, uh, I've, uh, I'm done. I'm over it uh, with the Guns N' Roses thing. Now I hear that they're playing with my current favorite band, and I'm like just so emotionally split down the center about it. Mm -hmm. On one end, yes, I absolutely think that it's great for them to play in front of 30,000 people. On the other end, I've relegated Guns N' Roses to a joke, perception-wise, yeah. to the musical community. And I think most people kind of view them as a joke nowadays. Uh, not their music back in the day. I don't think anybody goes back in the day and hears Welcome to the Jungle and goes, this is a joke. No, it's fucking great music. You know what I mean? Oh, but yeah. I think the way that most people view them today is that they fucking squandered what could have been one of the greatest uh rock careers of all time yeah completely oh, yeah. blew it right they did and tried multiple times to come back and failed miserably miserably every time not because of the quality of the music necessarily but because they would no show shows you know they'd, they'd cancel tours it was just constant right the last thing i want to happen is for them to have a show set up with a bandmate and then and them to not show up i'm not saying that's going to happen but with guns and roses that's always a possibility post the year 1993 that's crazy that's play. crazy that you th people still thinking that though like that's insane like yeah. that that's the reputation like if you buy a ticket to a gnr show you're like well it could not happen possibly like what? yeah there's always that chance <laughs> there's always that chance now they've been better about it in the last couple of years from what i understand right like <laughs> since they've gotten this new crew back together or their old crew back together for the most part so I, i'm really into the idea Dia, like conceptually, Guns N' Roses bandmade. I've actually been talking in recent weeks about how bandmade stuff kind of reminds me of Guns N' Roses stuff, especially the way that Konami writes guitar licks. I think it reminds me a lot of how Slash would write guitar licks. Um, so still, I view Guns N' Roses and bandmade as like possibly my two favorite rock bands of all time. So them coming together is like a dream come true for me. And I'm also just like, I hope people don't laugh at Bandmade for being a part of the Guns N' Roses experience. So. Uh, um, I still I, have that in the back of my head where I'm just like, when people bring up Guns N' Roses nowadays, people laugh. And I don't want that negative stigma attached to Bandmade. You know? Right. So um, I'm hoping, honestly, at this point, that Bandmade is capable of giving Guns N' Roses a better reputation by just being at the show having everybody be very positive about them and if guns and roses just pulls their weight then i think that the whole show will become like a really big event that people are proud of and can look at and like respect and i think it might be able to bring a little bit more respect back to guns and roses but i've yet to see that happen you know so, so i'm still just very cynical and very like weary about the idea of of band made being attached to Guns N' Roses in 2022. Well, baby you know, metal was attached to Guns N' Roses, and thank you for bringing that up in the comment section. So they played with them in 2017, and oh. it's fared very well for baby metal. I'm sorry, Ryan. Go ahead. I interrupt you by accident. No, that's that's fine. Um, you're everything you're bringing up, Champ. Yeah, good points, but it's also something that you know their management was like 
they know all that shit too, you know, and they, yeah. they really take care of the band and they obviously see it as a benefit too. And I, you know, I, it, it's gotta be, it's mutual benefit for both camps. Guns N' Roses, I, I can't see them being like, yeah, put whoever you want on there. I don't give a fuck. Like they're, they want people that are a band that's going to draw people. So it's mutually, mutually beneficial. I'm hoping. Yeah. I'm hoping for the best. I mean, if they don't show up, then hopefully, you know, the Japanese bands are going to fucking play anyway. They will be there. Yeah. <laughs> They're yeah, going to sure. fucking be there. <laughs> you know, but yeah, if it, ult- if it overshadows something GNR does and overshadows the rest of the show, it'll, it'll suck. But I'm hoping maybe. Ultimately, yeah. like, I think that the, the, the potential positives from this outweigh the potential negatives, right? So, like, if you're talking about a ceiling and a floor, the ceiling goes higher for the success rate of band made coming out of this show, then the floor gets lower. Yeah. So I'd prefer, I think that this happens than it doesn't happen, the, but I, I would goddamn like, and you know, somebody in the comments just said, there's been no issues with GNR on this current tour. Well, great, but there was yeah. issues for 25 years, you know? Mm-hmm. So like, it's really hard to just ignore that, you know, but, but ultimately I do think that the positives, the potential positives Our outweigh benefit. the potential negatives. Well, good news though. Like, the baby metal tour went well and then baby metal mm-hmm. ended up opening for red hot chili peppers they played with um a bunch of other big bands i can't even remember right now um but like guns and roses could have opened for baby metal like baby metals all was already in, 20, was that, in 2017 i don't oh, know 2017. no no this is 2017 no, 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 so no. no um so that's what i'm saying so that's why i'm excited for band made because if baby we've all seen baby metal's career after opening up for huge bands that's why i'm ecstatic for bandmate like they're and guys i hope you go to the show because it's probably your last chance to be in an intimate show that, that close yeah. yeah yeah i'm telling you right now after this u.s tour and they go go play with those big bands that's out the window just like the warning mm-hmm. the warning is opening i think up for gnr also but they already opened up for hailstorm and that's impossible so if you didn't get the chance to check the warning in the beginning yeah. you're not mm-hmm. now you're not going to get that close ever again so um, if you have a chance to get tickets, you know, hit up people if you can try to go watch a bandmate show on this tour yeah, because it, absolutely it is not absolutely. happening again. <laughs> this is this is your this is where it's going to be the most. This intimate. is it. This is like you know the, that is it. <laughs> the Phoenix venue was it's like 500 people. Jim Morrison, thank you so much for the uh, <laughs> super chat. Yeah, I said uh, uh, he's made the first eight shows. Postcards seem to rotate uh, every four shows, but yeah. 500 person venue jesus man. scored two miku mm-hmm. and one when i Konami saw videos pick. of that show i'm like that is so small that's fucking <laughs> um bill b says as long as bandmate delivers an amazing performance i think things will work out for them even if gnr blows it yeah yeah but, exactly yes and and let me just let me you know conclude what i was saying thanks Wait. for the super chat bill yeah and also we saw another super chat i saw a super that chat was from, jim from, from, we just announced it no jim. we there was jim and bill uh, no, oh. we announced Jim. Oh, it channel. just came. Up. Okay. No, no, we, did we get to um, guys. Guys, I already announced Andrew Jim. before. That's what Ryan did. Ryan, Ryan read it off. <laughs> um, super chat. Thank no, you there was one like ten minutes ago from Andrew that I don't think we called out. But okay. thank you, Andrew. I got that. Um, but yeah, uh, just to conclude what I was saying, I, I, if I was in Japan, I would buy a ticket to the show, knowing how disappointed I've been for the last two and a half decades over Guns N' Roses. I would still buy a ticket to that fucking Guns N' Roses bandmade show, and it would probably be the most excited I have been for a concert in, you know, a decade. So uh, I, I'm, I'm being cynical, and I'm being, you know, a little bit uh, nervous for bandmade, you know, just being attached to them. But I, I'm also, like, I would be hyped up and excited if I had the chance to see it. Um, yeah, you're uh, Andrew. Shout out to you also, man, for the super chat. He said, Bandmade in Dallas was amazing. Mm. So appreciate mm. it, guys. Oh, and Dennis Calhoun coming in with the $20 super chat right now. Dude, guys, thank you so money. much. Thank you, Dennis. You guys are, you guys are <laughs> fucking cool. I love thank when you, you give so us money. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're cheering up, champ. He's just been miserable as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Hey, on a positive uh, note, I'm, I'm actually not in a bad mood. I'm just like, I don't have as much to like add because you guys have like been involved in stuff for the last couple of weeks. Jeff and I'm just like waiting. Sad. I'm just yeah. like in the waiting room. 
<laughs> I can't okay. add on to any of this. <laughs> I'm sorry, champ. Don't worry. One more week, right? What, what show you're going it's to? Not even. I'm going in what? Today's Sunday. I'll be there on Wednesday. I'll be in Philly on Ooh. Wednesday. So yeah. it's good. Um, it's good. It's good. I'm really it's looking forward to it. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, hell yeah, baby. This is gonna, and that's gonna be sweet. That venue is not too big. That's gonna be more of an intimate setting. Yeah. Also, um, and then I'm gonna be on uh, on the Jersey one on, on Sunday, but that one's gonna be a big one. So uh, I don't know exactly how how that that one's gonna be different than everything else, but I'm so fucking just savor Philly. Champ, I feel you, man, because I, if I was in your position, I'd be the same way. I'd be like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you're right. right? Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of delayed gratification in the first place. So, like, I not like right the now, idea of waiting until I get to a certain point. Yeah, but when we have to talk about it. <laughs> when I have to talk about it for three weeks beforehand, I'm just like, all right. I'm, I might as well just take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, we're moving on, okay? We're going to talk about the Love Bites new basis. Ooh. Oh, Yeah. yeah. Um, this is a. Uh, we'll play this clip real quick. Almost 700,000 subscribers on her own channel. So she has a big me, by the reputation way. already. And this makes it very exciting for Love Bites because I think that brings in more fans that may have not have heard of Love Bites. And the reason why I say this is because when I was checking out her videos, she was playing a bunch of different genres and styles. And slap basing seemed to be one of the most predominant styles of music that she was playing on her channel. Which is really cool because I'm kind of hoping that that style bleeds over into Love Bites and we get a little bit more fancy bass playing here and there. And if not, it's still going to sound good and we know that she's a competent bassist overall. Now, Fami has covered well-known artists like Billie Eilish, Otto, who has been blowing up the charts lately, and many other artists. Now, the interesting thing was when I was taking a deep dive and listening to all the covers, another thing that was fascinating and I found when watching all of her videos was that she never showed her face. And I kept looking into it, and then I went back to the Love Bites video, and then I realized she shows her face in a Love Bites video. So not only was it a reveal of her joining Love Bites, but it seems like it was a face reveal also <laughs> on top of that. Let me know down below in the comments what you- All right, so I want to mention about the face reveal. Uh, people- Dream all over again. Hold on, people educated <laughs> me. No, no, people educated me on this. So the reason why is because normally they can't show their face because of work. And- Probably what happened was she had to cover her face when she's doing the bass playing and stuff like that And then probably when she joined love bites. She was like, well, I'm obviously gonna be set financially or something oh, something like along her those lines real job. <laughs> Yeah, her real job. So in Japan, they can't they they could lose her job if they find out they're on the internet like that Wow, so that is bonkers, so, dude. I did not know that, so I guess it's a common thing over there for them to cover so their face. that's why a lot of the covers and stuff people do, they always got the mic in front of their face or... Yeah, um, yeah, because if you see all the videos, the hair's all the way down, and at first I was like, it's almost like she did a face reveal and, <laughs> like, yeah. a face reveal, but um, shout out to anybody who told me that, and then I also found out she's only 20 years old, guys. Wow. Somebody put a somebody put a hilarious comment. They said that brings down the age average of love bites. <laughs> I forgot who said that, but I was like, <laughs> it does from like what thirty six to like thirty one now. <laughs> They're like one of the older bands that like uh, you know is currently still like constantly active, you know from the from the members' ages. So it's in, it is interesting to bring in a twenty year old. She's like super young. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But like she's like right out of high school, man. And somebody yeah. met, uh, uh, Crano Falco mentioned Otto is like that. There's a reason why we've never seen her mm -hmm. face. I don't know if that's the same reason for Otto because she actually I don't know if has, Otto needs a day job. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't need a day job. And she has <laughs> a, she mentions in an article that she just didn't want to reveal her face. Like if you go look up the information, she actually <laughs> announced about how she doesn't want to show her face and stuff. I think it's cool as fuck that she does that, by the way. Like, she doesn't yeah. have to deal with any of the, the annoyingness that everybody else has to deal with, but she's still going to be a millionaire by next she's year, you know? 20, so. She's 20 yeah. today, somebody says. Two yeah, she, she was a teenager until today, you know? Wow, so, like, man. you know, privacy, for, to, to be able to make that much money and, and put out that kind of music and, you know, I, I mean, and and be that young and not have to reveal your face. That's fucking cool as shit, man. That is like my ideal job right there. Yeah, right? for sure. Well, so, what are we but, doing showing our faces? <clears throat> yeah. yeah, we should be covering should it. So. Sorry, well, You can't yeah. cover the shit up, baby. This is the money maker right now. <laughs> for sure. For <laughs> we sure. should just all have deep fakes of Champ's face for our squares. Yeah. yeah. There we go. We'll just do that. Cover it up. <laughs> so... 
the uh what am i what am i trying to say so the the love bites video i didn't watch that yet but it showed them Ooh. all playing together you guys yeah. watched it right yeah i showed them playing together so she ends up revealing her face and right. um cool. at at the end and of her being in the band and stuff like that i was re-watching that video this morning and it almost reminds me of when gotcha Rick spin got angie on board because Fami also has like this really contagious smile yeah. that like Brings you can tell energy. she's gonna bring a different energy to love bites that they haven't had before because they're all pretty serious musicians focus and stuff but she's like dancing around and you know just awesome. cool energy was it, was it a new well i guess it wasn't a new song was it it was just I, what did they uh, play i forget the song I was going to say, so to it and see any kind of stylistic differences with what she's No, doing. the song was not new. It was a song they already did. But I wanted to ask everybody because I didn't look into this part. Did they re record that piece of the song or is it just some playing to, to the old track? Because that I wasn't sure of if they just um, just did the recording again, again or not. Brave-hearted. It yeah, seemed like it yeah. was this audio of them actually performing it in that studio space. It did? Okay. I couldn't remember because it was on the plane. So I was like, should just listen to it again, but um, cool. Fami yeah. it's the a re-record. song was brave hearted, yeah. It's re- is a re recorded, and that's an old It seems like everyone's right? saying it was re recorded, awesome because yeah, the bass was turned up louder than uh, it was normally <laughs> clever in the, in the old version of the song. <laughs> and thank you, Motley Crew, for $10. Thank you, yeah. love your money, baby. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, all right, yeah, I'm excited about getting new love bites. Yeah, wait, what do you th- yeah. Wait, wait, what do you think about all this stuff that's going on with uh, Love Bites? I forgot to ask you, man, about Love Bites and with uh, Bandmade. Well, I'm excited for the new bassist because, well, what I was just saying, I feel like Fami's going to bring a new energy injection to the band, a new freshness to their sound and stuff, so that's really cool. And I'm super excited for Bandmade. Like, like I was saying before, it's the perfect demographic, the... Guns N' Roses fans who like that guitar driven music and rock and roll. So Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's all good. Cool. And then we got other news. We got Baby Metal who is also joining Sabaton, which is really awesome. Now I saw some things about Sabaton not liking him. I'm telling you guys right now, go see a live show. I saw live footage and they sound so much better live. I know it's not everybody's thing, but they look like they put on hell of a live show. Uh, I would I would give them the benefit of the doubt if you do go, if you do go to that baby metal concert, don't leave before Sabaton. Give them two songs, please. Give them two songs. You're there already. <laughs> I'm just saying. You might as well stay. Yeah, you might as well stay. I saw a lot of comments of people saying they're gonna leave and all this stuff. I'm like, give them a chance. I know the recordings don't do them justice. They it really doesn't. Because so energy- Sabaton is like th- that fucking big, huh? Yeah, they're a million <laughs> plus subscribers. Because I never hear anybody. I've. I, I know. I, I know, Alan. You've you've talked to them. You you like the band. They're not stuff, big in. I, but I never hear. I never hear anything about them. Me yeah, I, ne- yeah, I heard about Sabaton because of Baby Metal. So people right. brought up Sabaton, and I think there's a huge fan base of Sabaton fans. But you know, it's a specific group of people, and. But the thing that Sabaton, I think, is so unique is they have the whole history thing behind it um, with their music. I know it's very, I would say, almost generic sounding in a way not because it's very typical, like, you know, that kind of European style metal I'm not a big fan of. But I appreciate what they do with that metal because it's uh, it has the history behind it, which I think makes it very, it sounds really cool the way that they put it in. So what they do is they sing about, like, events that happened in the past and then they have a whole history channel that goes with it and i think that's what makes the band exciting i like like a core core group of fans who are gonna go well it seems like in europe they're just like huge from what everybody's saying because they're definitely not big in america like i I, I, is is baby metal just playing a show with them or is it a tour and is it in europe when they're They're playing all they're playing the europe leg of the tour let me play that video uh um, with all that news on it okay Telling me that Baby Metal will be joining Sabaton on tour. Now this tour is called the Tour to End All Tours, badass name, and they'll be joining them on the EU leg of the tour. Now I kind of expected something to happen with Sabaton and Baby Metal because of the interview I had with Joaquin. He kind of dropped some hints about 
some possible collab. Did you ever keep in contact with them afterward? Talk about doing other songs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about a lot of different things behind the scenes, sort of, uh, so to speak. We are in touch since we haven't announced anything or, you know, <laughs> yet. Yeah. And with, the, with the pandemic, it's really thrown a wrench into any plans. Well, a lot of things are up in the air that we would like to share with pretty much everyone, but we can't, you know. I didn't know it was going to be a tour, but now that I think about it, this was last year that I had this interview, and maybe this has just been something that's been in a year of planning. And I could see that happening with Baby Metal because they put a lot of stuff into the story behind Baby Metal and what's going on. Or maybe there's going to be still a full song with Sabaton and Baby Metal. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you think we're going to get a full song also with Sabaton and Baby Metal? They did homage and I, and that one was an okay song, but it, I felt like it was more of like a concert song. I didn't really get into it as much. So it would be really cool to see some more elaborate like collab, I think, with Joaquin from Sabaton. Like the Bring Me the Horizon collab, like something like that. If I had to put some money on it, I would definitely predict a new song with Sabaton and Baby Metal for sure. Now, Baby Metal had released some announcements and news about what they're doing with this, the other one, Legend Map, which is really cool, kind of laying out what's going on with Baby Metal. And they do have a new song coming out almost every single month, except for December. So as you can see, we got October, November. Then in January, we get Baby Metal Returns live. And their first two shows in January are going to be at the Makuhari Mese International Exhibition Hall in Tokyo. Goddamn, that's some it's a mouthful and I'm sure they're going to probably do that as a DVD or something along those lines of course in classic baby metal fashion and we'll have a new concert to check out but after that we have another new song in February another new song in March and then we have the release of the other one concept album super excited I really love the lore and story that they put behind baby metal that's what makes this band so awesome then of course there's April with Fox Day and I have a feeling on Fox Day hmm I think they might announce a U.S. tour or some U.S. shows. I don't know. Anyways, that's the gist of it. But I was thinking about it, too. Like, since they both have such an elaborate, like, storyline in both their music, it's very fitting. Like, because both bands are very show-oriented. Like, Sabaton has, like, things, like, firing off blasters and, like, they have tanks on stage and all that stuff. So it totally makes sense with Baby Metal. I don't know if Baby Metal is going to bring the same kind of energy with, like, their full tours with a rotating stage and stuff. Um, but I'm sure they'll bring something that's pretty pretty elaborate. Cool. Uh, but what do, you, what do you think, Champ? I don't know if that answered your question. I mean, no, but it did answer a lot of other questions I was going to ask, so <laughs> that, that's nice. <laughs> um, I'm just wondering, like, you know, because my, my go-to thought is that they Baby Metal played in front of, like, 60,000 people at the Tokyo Dome, right? Like, twice in a row as the headliners. So when something like that happens, you just go, oh, shit, like, how big does the other band have to be that they're opening for then? If they can, if they can sell out a 60,000-person arena... You know, then the other band you would expect can do the same, if not more, right? If, so if, if I'm not, mistaken, I just don't really know a lot about Sabaton, you know? So. Yeah, because Sabaton's way bigger than you think in the states, man. There's yeah, there's must, a lot of fans. That must be because must um, be. They, and also the cultural shift. You know what I mean? Like I don't know how big of a difference it is when you go from like your initial country to a different country, like how much of that actually like the support follows you like that, you know, cause baby metal in Japan obviously is bigger than baby metal everywhere else. Um, cause I, 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 it's probably the same with Sabaton, right? Well, like Sabaton, Sabaton in Europe is going to be bigger than they are everywhere you, else. You got to remember too, baby metal is only joining on the EU leg of the tour. That's what I was trying to, that's the uh, fact no, 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 I get that. And yeah. Sabaton so, is uh, touring everywhere else. Where they right. already either close to sell sold out already in in mm -hmm. all their cities that they're in, so I think they mm -hmm. definitely pull in numbers. They do have a million plus subscribers already, probably reaching to. Uh, mm. oh. Interesting. Had to see you in the chat says that the baby metal standalone shows are all around five thousand people when they're outside mm -hmm. of Japan. So I mean that's still a, a really nice. Um, 
you know, a really nice amount of people to show up at a show. But it, but it's true. That is not 50,000. You know, it would probably be hard for any band to go out of their initial country and do 50,000 anywhere else. Unless you are a band like Guns N' Roses and you've been around for fucking, you know, yeah. God knows how long. And you can still sell out a 30,000 person arena. Baby Metal is making a name for themselves. And before this happened, their hiatus is really what slowed them down. And I think when Baby Metal comes back, it's just going to be all guns blazing because they already were getting so much momentum with all the collabs that they were doing i mean i remember the bring me the horizon collab that song is king slayer one of my favorite songs <laughs> i don't even I still haven't it. heard that i think I that's the I only even, baby metal song i haven't heard oh my gosh so good i don't even consider it a bring me the horizon song I, I, it feels like more like baby metal featuring bring me the horizon but who cares <laughs> it's, it's just it's an um it's an amazing song i think um that's also, what i'd want that's what i'd want out of it honestly these bands got history to, you know they got history together they've done they toured together yeah. done shows together before they've worked together exactly. on songs so it's it's probably you know it's been i'm sure it's been mulled over a lot by management so it's it's probably just an easier way to get them out there without trying to set up a whole fucking tour and, and well and the true. shows and everything so they can get out there and they can grab some new fans you know it does seem you think from how i've experienced them you think that they would just do a fucking headline tour you know yeah but uh, this is probably the easiest way to get them out there and get them Joaquin, back in front of people. Joaquin said in the interview that he was talking to Koba Metal, so they're in direct right. contact with each other. And in that interview, which, by the way, we do have up on the podcast, um, I do have the full interview on Spotify and stuff for you guys if you guys want to check it out. But he does mention about plans in the future during that interview he's like he couldn't release it and i i don't know what was calculated and what isn't so they definitely have something in the works um okay and somebody was mentioning december since they're not releasing a song they might be actually coming out with maybe a joint song in december it could be who knows but i definitely like ryan was saying they've worked together he mentioned in an interview he's literally talking to koba metal so <laughs> something is it it makes sense yeah. i just didn't expect a tour honestly i expected like a collab and stuff like that so i almost feel maybe they had some of this tour planned already or it maybe it was already planned and it was just on a hiatus like joaquin says says in the interview he's like we oh there's some things but it was stalled so I think that tour was actually planned to be a lot earlier and then they kind of just threw it together and then baby metal just couldn't do the entire tour. So they just did the EU only. I, but originally I think it was planned for both of them to do the full tour together is what I'm, was is what I'm thinking. But then all those issues happened with scandal and everything. And, and I might've put a wrench into things, but I'm, that's all speculation. I have no clue. So. Hmm. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, I hope they come to America so I could experience both of them. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. I I can't wait to go. I I got I got tickets to the Austria one, so I'm gonna go to Austria and watch watch Baby. Metal. I don't want to take a chance of Baby Metal breaking up <laughs> before I yeah. see that. I was like, I don't care. It'll be once in a lifetime. I'm gonna go. Um. I was I was like, pull out my credit card so quickly. I was like, ah, got the ticket. <laughs> yeah that's cool man i but don't i hope this isn't like the maximum the hormone one where you bought tickets to go see them in spain and then ended up not being allowed no, there. i i looked oh. up everything i looked up everything i'm clear to go the the issue before yeah. was my health problems with uh taking the vaccine that's what stopped me from going last time so all i have to do is get a negative test and i'm good to go but nice. I guess that Sweet. could be a risk too. <laughs> but I, stop it, champ, with your negativity, man. Get out of here. <laughs> leave, leave. <laughs> you pessimistic asshole. God damn it. I gotta, I gotta bring reality <laughs> just to you guys somehow, man. <laughs> I have, I have enough reality. Okay. <laughs> I have enough. Can't enough avoid it. Reality. <laughs> lost. I lost both my cars. I don't need any more reality. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. But anyways, wait. Oh, uh, what do you think, Wave? I'm quiet on it. I think that I mean they both seem to go really hard over the top with their stage shows. So I think it'll be really interesting to see what happens. I mean, I don't know much about either band, really. Like I'm still in the the newborn phases of being a baby metal fan, and I've seen like one or two Sabaton videos. So. I don't know enough about them to have an educated opinion about, but 
I mean, I mean, both of them have insane, impressive stage shows. So, well, I'm excited about the new song. What do you guys think about the new song? You guys have all listened to it. Ryan's done a reaction to it. You guys checked it out. Oh, Thursday. Divine Attack. Divine Attack. Yeah. What do you guys think? Yeah, about that? it. I thought it was awesome. Dude. Yeah, man, it was. It was very. It was cool. I don't. Want to, I mean, I did a video. I I talked about it there. <laughs> I was not disappointed. I put it that way. Yeah, me and Champ went on and on about it for 40 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 40 minute reaction. That is, uh, that is very Under me and Wave. Song. <laughs> yeah. Pretty yeah. Good. When you put the two of us together, the pause button is, is part of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we did listen to it once all the way through without pausing, though. We did do that the first time, but then we had a lot yeah. to say about it afterwards. I don't know how many spoilers you want uh, before you actually listen I've, to it, Alan. I've heard 40 seconds of it already, so I've heard a big chunk of it. All right, and... well, I'll just say that my favorite part of the song is the second verse. Yeah. Okay. Oh, why, yeah. Why, yeah, why? the second verse. The second verse is my favorite part of the song. <laughs> why, and you'll why? understand why once you hear it. I, no, you can say it now. It's fine. <laughs> the well, second like verse. It? There is no second verse. Oh, really? It does, it does not exist. <laughs> so it's just like one verse? There's one verse, yeah. There's one verse you, of the song. When right. you listen, it'll make sense. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's it's cool. It was a cool. Uh, you guys are making you guys are making concepts. me worried because you like, don't seem excited about the song. Oh my god! No, damn. I love the song. Oh, okay. I'm at I, I maximum excitement level right now. Yeah, I I feel like the song was, <laughs> as I said in the video, it was exactly what I wanted the first mm. baby metal song to be off this album. Okay. It was what I was what I had been talking about for the last month, as expectations and hopes for what this would sound like. It was exactly what I was wanting it to be. So I have literally zero problems with it. Yeah, same. Yeah. Uh, Simno, thank you for the reminder, too. Lordy's also uh, playing that show. So it's going Lordy, Baby Metal, and then Sabaton. I'm not sure who Lordy, Lordy. is. Lordy, Lordy. I'll have to look into Yeah, me neither. Um, before I move on, next thing, I don't know. if uh, Motley Crude, thank you so much for the super chat, man. Appreciate it. And yeah, uh, shout out to Rock and Roll for joining the members. I appreciate Welcome that, too. To my Thanks, CG. guys. All right. So Astrism is so interesting because I was just talking about this band. Or they did a cover. No, not Astrism. I'm on the wrong one. I'm talking about something not already. Astrism just re released uh, live in Japan at the Zep Yokohama. Is that the... Where is that? Where would that be in Japan? Yokohama? Yeah. Because <laughs> um, normally uh... you hear the other place. I can't remember the name of it. I think there's a lot of Zeps since they do Zep oh. tours. Oh, okay. But, That's why. Uh, let's see. It's by Kawasaki, kind of. Oh. Uh, South Tokyo. Oh, wow. Okay. South of Tokyo. So, so, yeah, they should relieve their live performance. At, so, um, it's 17 minutes, so I'm assuming it's a full set or quite a few songs on there to check out live so go ahead and check out that it looks uh it looks pretty good i can't wait to check it out have you guys checked out the one with the with the singer from um sweden i think it was or i can't remember where he's yeah. from that was a pretty good song actually at first i was questionable about it and then on the oh. second half of it it was actually pretty good it's a really good song As yes what did you guys think of it Ooh, that's heard it the what sorry Asterism with the singer? Yeah. What did you Dang. think? I can't remember if I Different. watched that oh, or if okay. I heard about it on here, but <laughs> I, I didn't watch it. I heard about it. So yeah, I, I thought it was pretty I thought it was pretty good. I, I really liked that. At first it was a little off putting with the vocals, but uh as at first I was like, Oh, this is so weird and then and then they finished the chorus and they went on to the second verse and I'm like there's this one little part where it got intricate. They let the instruments breathe and they start going off like the bass slap and then a solo. And then he comes back in. I'm like, Oh my God, I love this. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, was, I was watching it with Tina on our live reactions. We we're like, she like, we were both like, I've never watched a song and been like, I don't really like this. And then all of a sudden we're like, Oh my God, I love this <laughs> by, the, <laughs> by the end of it. So it was really cool. I really, I really recommend uh, checking out that, um, that song is a great song. Uh, Simno Sweet. says that concert has four of their songs and it's from their recent live stream concert. I didn't even know they had oh, a live cool. stream concert. I would have definitely watched that if I knew about it. 
So is this uh, this vocalist that that worked with them on that one song? That's just one time thing, like a feature. It's for the Ghoul anime. Uh, I don't remember the full name, and it's for an oh, anime. To- a, Tokyo Ghoul. Tokyo Ghoul, and they was uh, I think it was it's for that. It was so, um, in the chat, let me know. I can't remember. I didn't. I didn't pull up that information. I couldn't remember if we talked about it last podcast or not. But. I think we. I think we did because I, I remember talking about this, but I definitely haven't seen it. Also, yeah, you guys should check so it out. I, I'm with yeah, Brian it was in the top back. ten, wasn't it? Oh, that might yeah. have been what it was. You guys should check it the out. The asterism really top ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the asterism list. That's right. <laughs> now, which so- Soken Inaro breaks into every once in a while, but it's still pretty much the asterism list. <laughs> well, Soken Inaro might break in again because they came out with a cover to a Yal Sobi song, which also Fami, the bassist from that just joined the live, Love Bites. Now we can say Fami from Love Bites uh, also did some bass covers of this artist. So it makes oh, me nice. kind of intrigued yeah. to check out this artist and see what they're all about. But uh, So Can Yinaro is still busting out covers. I love this because it's just like in a band room. I, I, it's just so cool just seeing him on the drums, like just so nonchalantly. Yeah. Just like, they kind of shoot a lot of videos in this spot, don't they? Yeah, I like it. It seems it's such a perfect shot and it looks good. Would you say, Ryan? They're so good, man. When they do these studio things and it's just... They're so fucking good. <laughs> like the, the how how complicated their songs, how their music is, and what they pull off live. It sounds like so much more than a three piece. <laughs> yeah. And with the vocals, their vocals always. Every time I listen to them, it like the vocals are, are more and more impressive. Just how they use them and how they, you know, like use the vocals instead of just singing. Yes, the trading the off. Yeah, it's amazing. And on top of the insane. Uh, musicianship that they're doing like I I don't know how they do all of that at the same time oh yeah because it's really rhythmic singing along with this insane play. or it doesn't match anything that's going on musically <laughs> notes being carried over like 15 different changes it's just it's awesome that, yeah. that's very true it's very they have like Wade was saying, different syncopations with the actual voice singing <laughs> over the guitar, and and they're doing something different, and then she's singing something different while the bass is playing something that's following parts of the drums, but also carrying a backup melody to her vocals, and it's mind blowing to hear. And I just know how much practice that takes to just get that down, just to separate your brain from the guitar. So, like, they're pretty much just, like, not even thinking about what they're playing on guitar at that point. It's amazing. Um, I was uh, learning the other day that even, like, to really master that, they say you don't focus on the vocals or instrument at all, which is wild to me. But it actually works. So you focus on, like, an object out in front of you while you're playing and singing. And I tested it out. I did a recording because I was like, you know, let me see. Because normally when I sing and play, I'm always feel like I'm focusing on something, right? Or like I'm focusing on that next high note or I'm focusing on, um, oh, is my hand in the right place? Or, oh, oh, I haven't looked down in a while. Let me look down. You know, so so I tried it out and it yeah. actually works. So I just. I think it helps you live in the moment instead of thinking about anything else. Yeah, and I think that might be why bands sometimes or most of the time sound so much better live because they're focusing on the audience and they they have like that focus because when you're in a room by yourself, there's really not much to focus on. You're too busy um, in your performance. Focus on was, playing the right notes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then when you're live, you're kind of like, I got to entertain, so what am I doing? Well, not every band thinks like that. Some people will just stand there and go like this. But <laughs> if you're that <laughs> player, then, yeah, it's not going to work out that way. But it works. Yeah, I feel like when you're thinking about what you need to play is yeah. when you mess up the most because you're thinking ahead exactly. instead of thinking about what you're doing at that moment. I, I think the whole per- the, the point is you want it to become second nature, right? That's yeah. like you want it to be instinctual that you're just going to be able to play or sing. This is why I can't do – these things well, <laughs> this is why th- this is... i am incapable of singing a song while I'm playing a guitar because th- i cannot put myself in that this spot is... but if you can then 
it's all instinctual and you're good to go. The reason why this happens too, I think is even as a teacher, when I'm teaching a guitarist, I always tell them to think about the next chord ahead and it does help with transitioning. And I think we for, like, I forget like, Hey, eventually though, you need to not do that. It needs to come second nature. Cause when you say visualize the next chord, it helps you transition automatically there. Um, I always, I call it like play the song in your head without actually picking up the guitar. It's way more difficult than you think. Cause you have to actually sit there and you're like, all right. And then, but you don't touch it. And that actually helps you get songs on faster. Uh, for me, it does at least. Yeah. It's like um, meditating on the yeah. chord, on the actual music. Yeah, absolutely. Dang. Thank uh, you guys for these super chats. Yeah, that, shout out to Maka Luku. He said, great time to be alive, to be able to see Bandmade live, saw the Dude, SF I, and Phoenix shows. What a, th what a thrill. And then we got I another one by that. Daniel Just Tol grateful. Sorry, sorry go ahead. Sorry, and then Daniel Tol, thank you also for Super Chat, says, has anyone checked out the new ex Aldia Singers re no new music video? Go ahead, Wave. Interesting. I just no. love that Maka Luku's perspective here just great time to be alive to be able to see these band made on tour in these small venues you know who knows when they're gonna pop off but we know they have the potential so like you were talking about earlier alan yep like we're this tour is uh something special so it's just nice to see this grateful attitude you know what a thrill and then to answer daniel answer your question I have not checked out the ex Aldi singer. Uh, I was, I didn't even know if she had anything. I wasn't a big fan of the singers for Aldi, Aldius as much, but that's just me. Oh, Do you guys have any right. thoughts Reno. on that? Reno. Reno. Man, I don't, I don't know much about Aldius yet. Yeah. Me neither. I don't think I've heard them. I've heard a couple of songs, but I was kind yeah. of iffy about Aldius. I know they're like one of the OGs of that, but I haven't, haven't really got much time with them at october 26 we have a first mini album i know i mentioned this um on another um podcast but try that is coming out with signal it's going to be their mini release and that should be releasing uh, october 26 which that's like three days so get ready for that they've been they've been on it too man trying to like put off a few music videos in a short period of time and they have all been pretty good like production wise have been a really amazing uh, overall with the mixing and all that stuff with the mixing and on these last three songs have been remarkable and then they have different producers for each one so that that's been really giving them a different flavor for every song also i mean i prefer the spoopy vert like producer side of things but i hope they really bring that back because that was my favorite out of the three Ugh. that they've released but overall i mean they're really good i could get used to those other songs really easily yeah. i did i finally heard cry out on friday and you i think? really liked it it was it was catchy you know i don't like it as much as spoopy but i still really enjoyed it something about spoopy just like really works i don't yeah, know what it is it's, it's, it's got like that raw song. indie feel almost yeah that, yeah, it's a really good song. What do you guys think? Fuzzy you got, guitar. <laughs> you guys check out it's, the other songs. It's pretty technically intricate, so I, I I feel like that's a that's an easy winner in my eyes. You know, if something is just technically intricate and it has a catchy chorus, then like I mean, that's you win. I, you've got me right there. <laughs> you know, right. I, I think a lot of their other songs. Well, I've only heard a couple of them outside of Spoopy, um, and they're not quite as as technical as that one is. Uh, but just as catchy. So if you like the catchy aspects, then I think that you'd still, you know, enjoy a lot of their music. Yeah. But uh, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure why that one in particular seems to have like more, uh, like unique conceptual technicalities to it than the other songs that they've written. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the on this next one, on Lucky Morpheus, this last music video hit a million views. So congratulations to them. And Otto is, is still which live. One? It's uh I just closed the window. <laughs> the Redivac? Their or last their last song that M they Revolution, just I think. M Revolution, yep. Oh, I haven't heard that one yet. Dang. Oh, you should check it out. It's a good song. So fucking cool. So cool. congrats to them. I, I don't think it was their last one though. Their last one I believe was the uh It wasn't. I, I misspoke. The, the horror house one. I, a death mansion murder some some death murder mansion or something like that uh the one with the really cool fucking title on the really cool fucking video that oh, sounds interesting champ 
had mentioned about the music video, so I went back and rechecked it out again. And yeah, Champ, you're right. That music video is amazing. Um, Ryan, <laughs> what do you th- what do you think about these uh, new releases and stuff that have coming out? Have you checked out any uh, of them? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Did you check out any? I don't think I've in? heard a lot of that, a lot of the stuff you're just talking about. Me and Ryan are just trying to survive through this stream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone's dying th- today. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> just <visually laughs> dying. On the- it's like, oh, my, my head is like squeezing itself into a pulp. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, let's just give ourselves a little credit. We come here on Sunday fucking mornings, bro. Last night was Saturday night. We do this every Sunday whoa, morning. Whoa, yeah. no. I'm not going to give you credit because it's 11 a.m. for you. <laughs> it's 11 a.m. For me, it's exactly. 9 a.m. <laughs> It's twelve thirty right now. I, but I, get, I get your I, point. Champ was up for the early morning stream on Friday. Hey, that's true. I and he was alive. He's way more alive than to the, today. So no excuses. <laughs> I didn't get home. I just mean. I mean, as a general excuse forever, looking forward, we do this on Sunday morning. People like to enjoy Saturday nights. All I hear is bitching. Yeah. That's all I hear. Yo, bro, I, I am going to build as many justifications and excuses as I can for every time that I fail on life. And that is what we should all try to do. You, you know, That's why you're the champ of medium expectations. I, I know. I'm starting to really feel you really take it up on that name. Like You, you live and breathe champ of medium. Medium. I gotta say, Cheers. I gotta give it to you. Cheers. I kind of want to like, like you know how in Spider Man when Harry Osborn wants Peter's blood, that's kind of what I want from Alan. <laughs> Wait, like what? what's in what's in there go. that gives you so much energy? <laughs> oh it's man, this really this out. really sounds bad after that it whole chase thing. <laughs> I want to I want to test your blood. <laughs> All right, confirmed. Strange. Champ has a killer. I mean, uh, Wave has a killer room. <laughs> it's confirmed. <laughs> oh my god! Oh wow! <laughs> Wave, Wave's new fetish: chasing Ellen's blood. Wait, god what damn. was my old fetish? <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, I've been loving being on the East Coast though. 11 a.m. for these podcasts. I'm like, whoo! An extra two hours? Fuck yeah! <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I would have quit this podcast a long time ago uh, if I was <laughs> living where you were living from. <laughs> I woke up at eight this morning and I'm like, I'm like, oh shit, I can go back to bed. <laughs> Fuck, <laughs> I went right back to bed. My alarm, of course, was set bed. for six a.m. Fuck my life, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you fell asleep at five forty-five. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Um, we got our top ten. Shout out to Simno for putting this together, man. Man, you just keep making this more badass every single yes. time. We got Simno is the man, dude. Like for, I wouldn't be able to live stream if not for Simno. So thank you so much. Yeah, chat. Throw the W's in for Simno. W's for Simno. So we're he has some interesting facts. You ready? So we got the most bodacious rise with Otto missing. So oh, I love that. This is my. Otto's I, missing. No, it's this song called "Missing." I thought the same thing oh when I read God. this. I thought the same thing. I was like, "What? What? What's?" <laughs> I thought the link was missing or something. I was tripping out this morning. I was way too tired when I was putting it together. But uh, Nemophila, the most heinous drop, dropped thirteen spots. Ridiculous, guys. Go watch a yeah. ray of light. <laughs> I don't. I. I'm trying to remember. I actually... They have another song, though. Yeah, they have another song out. But still, go listen to that one, too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, listen to them all. Listen to them all. listen to them all. (laughs) Actually, wasn't the Ray of Light the one that you didn't really like, Alan? Or somebody didn't really like it. It had a weird mix in it, I believe. Yes, I didn't, and I was playing it yesterday. It was funny. I was showing my uh, new baby niece, um, and she was was like the auto songs I was playing because I was putting together... uh, the b-roll and she started dancing and stuff started playing and then put on nemophila she stopped walked up to my phone and like grabbed it <laughs> look because oh, really? because dissension came on she's like yeah and then ran <laughs> <laughs> and she's like <gasps> go like this awesome. and then yeah, that's a cool ray, ass baby bro and then ray of light came on i was like i don't remember this song <laughs> This is pretty good. I don't like and I looked heard at it. Heard it once and you're like, this mix sucks. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh shit, I've already heard this. 
Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, this so is the you one. You need I, to go watch the fucking video. <laughs> this is the one I didn't <laughs> like as much. So everyone keeps sending Alan links to Ray of Light. <laughs> yeah. Then I ended up I ended up liking it. So it's funny you mentioned that because I was like, man, I don't remember the guitars being this badass in this song. So I listened yeah, to it dude, twice. I love that song. <laughs> I now love that song, but that's what I mean. I really feel like if you're in a certain mood, like it can affect your whole reaction to a song. I, I like really feel that way because there's some songs that I went back and listened to with Tina on a live stream, and I'm like, this is not as good as I remember. And then there's other songs I go back and I'm like, this is fucking phenomenal. Why did I not like this? <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I really think it, it really depends on your mood. Uh, yeah, yeah if, you're, if you're not in a good mood, then you're not willing. You're much less willing to accept new things into your life, right? Yeah, hence like, this yeah. podcast with Champ this morning. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know what that means, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody in the chat really wants us to mention Otto's new song that's premiering tomorrow at seven a.m. So, Otto's got a new song that's coming out tomorrow at seven a.m. Yeah. Nice, and it's the title is question marks. And the is is it? I was wondering if that's actually the title, or if yeah. they they're Don't just like it is. yeah, they're just like we're not going to tell you. It's a exactly, it's, a secret. Yeah. it's a mystery. <laughs> uh, the live I can see it going either way. The live stream just ended too, by the way. That was like not too long ago, or is it still going? I think it ended a while, like around the time we started. Mm. Um, but I was watching that before I hopped on Zoom. I had no idea what she was saying, but I just love listening to her voice. Does, is her talking voice like just as awesome? <laughs> so she was doing a lot of like really expressive stuff where you could hear the grit in her voice. Oh like, wow! I, I'm, I have no idea what she was doing, but she she would be talking normally, and then she'd be like <laughs> or <What>? something. <laughs> we'll just have to go back and watch it. I, I know what you're talking about. So she yeah. just goes into her Wait. like scream vocals while she's talking. <laughs> yeah, can you do that again? <laughs> I want another imitation. Hey, Dude, she could uh, be a voice actress. Yeah, <laughs> rock and roll, rock and roll, rock and roll with the $10 super chat. It says 2.30 a.m. in Guam. In Guam. We got a Guam fan out there. Oh, that's awesome, that's man. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, well, he's, thank he you should, for being here. He, he should be in bed, but he's watching us instead. So not only is he in Guam, but he likes us enough to not sleep. Sure, so <laughs> cool right shit here. all around. Yeah. We're complaining about being awake during normal waking hours. And it's like 2.30 a.m. <laughs> quit, quit bitching, you assholes. I'm stayed up for this. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so guys, I didn't get sleep on this podcast today. No. <laughs> there, there's another reason. <laughs> All right, so this one I'm kind of confused because it shows cry out uh, for most excellent new entry, but it says praise and mar marmook. I don't. I think this is supposed to be trident. I'm assuming. Um, here, I'm gonna click on that. Cry right. out. This sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. By the way, I don't know who that was, but that sounds that's pretty cool good. Start. Yeah, that's a cool yeah. start. Most what was that? I love it was it. fucking metal is what it was. <laughs> Praise yeah. with Marmo Marmoku? No, that's not right though. There's something's wrong with that. We're just gonna ignore that one. Um most bogus <laughs> new egg entry. I love this. How do you get the most bogus new entry, Sim though? That is a, that is my favorite category though. <laughs> yeah. like, is this? He's this just trying to start BS. shit. He's just trying to start shit with whoever entered that in. Uh, did that take a to be a <laughs> neat <laughs> game for that? Because that's and not that girl or is uh, it bogus because Necro, of No, that's so Necronomidol, right? Domino? Yeah. Necronomidol? <laughs> ne ne Nailed it. Nedromonical. <laughs> Nedromonical. Did you say Midol? <laughs> it's in the title. <laughs> Necronomidol. Anyways, <laughs> rising from the dead, uh, Hanabie went up one spot. Neat game. And then most nice. entries in the chart meaning most uh, songs entered in for the band. We have Nemophila, Otto, Bish, and Trident, which makes sense because they've been releasing out a bunch of songs. Now, this is very interesting. Still mm. pulling in the views. You remember the uh, Sim song, The Rumbling, which is doing awesome. That is pulling in over a quarter million views a week. <laughs> Still? Still? That is insane. What the, dude, insane. They're, they're making a killing on that song. Yeah, we're at 28 million on this song. Look at this. 28 million. 
I as... mean, it's a cool ass song, but it's also attached to Attack on Titan, which is a huge mm-hmm. part of. That. Imagine landing that gig though, like you oh get yeah, the it's like the top notch one. I'd blow it, Titan get game. my song, and be like, ah, we're gonna go with someone else. Yeah, like, can you get on Naruto? <laughs> can you get on Attack on Titan? If you do, you win at life. It's over. <laughs> Nobody can compete. I wonder if like Maximum Hormone would still be a thing without their anime appearance. I wonder. Because they they blew up with their when they did the Death Note one, right? Mm. As, if I'm not mistaken. So I wonder if Sim is just going to be more of a known band now just because of this uh, anime. Well, they've done animes a lot though in the past, right? Like so, like this wasn't the first anime song that they did. They're kind of like known for that. It's just that this one in particular, like this AOT right now, Attack on Titan, is so fucking popular right now. I think it, it's probably like within the top three most popular animes right now yeah so the timing on this one is just fantastic plus it's got to be of good quality people are going to be pissed if a an anime ost comes out and it's shite and it doesn't match the actual theme of the season of that anime right so the fact that this season was so popular plus the song is actually fucking cool as shit you know that combination right there and plus we also have a cover of this coming out soon Mm. I just got the vocals for that. I can't wait. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I forgot. I've su- I've sent drums off to so many people in the past few months that I've never seen the product actually come to light. So I'm excited for that. Don't worry. Both both the things you did drums on, Wave, are coming to life. Awesome. <laughs> Don't worry. They'll, they'll be up. We're trying, to, we're trying to get Ryan to do the bass, though, for the Attack on Titan one. He, for, he forgot, Jeez. though. He already forgot, and I just reminded him on live stream. This is number Perfect 58 in the queue. He's <laughs> <laughs> already messaged me on Discord. Hey, what are you doing for this? What are you doing for that? Bro, I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> barely <laughs> hanging on here. Just <laughs> we're, we're on threads here, bro. We're, we're stuck together with duct, takes a, tuck, duct tape and band aids. Yeah, hey, that's Ed- tough. <laughs> Edward, that thank you so much. That he just said is how well we're put together. Yeah, dude, that was rough. I struggled through that one. I struggled through I don't what? know what just happened. I almost said we were we were being held together by band maids, and I was like, that would be cool. That's, <laughs> true. That's not what I wanted to say. <laughs> hey, Edward Hamrick, he's also from Guam with another uh, another super chat, and it says, but he's been stuck in Minnesota for another seven years or so. No, so. Minnesota. Minnesota. Sorry, I get that I, reference. I didn't get the pun. That who's I, that Minnesota rapper that that's in the, his song? Please explain, guys, because I have no clue what the fuck is it. Atmosphere? No, was it atmosphere? Anyway, uh. I get it because I I mean I've read on the border of Minnesota and Wisconsin. But what does so, it mean, hey, Edward? What does it mean? I don't get it. Because <laughs> it's just a pun because Minnesota snow. gets so much snow. Oh. You know what um, snow is, right? Now. Minnesota. Yeah, I just he, he he lives in Texas. Have you forgotten already, man? No, it's just that's just a weird pun. I, I need don't... to know what who did, <laughs> who because it was in a a song from a local rapper. Oh, uh, okay. Not too long ago, and now I can't remember. All right, let's get into this top ten, guys. Why is it? Oh, Do I'm it sorry. up, baby. Yeah. I didn't. We, I think we mentioned this last time, but in case you didn't know, Sim stands for Silence is Mine, and they're down to number 10 with their new song, Light It Up. And it's a Japanese alternative metal band, if you guys didn't know, from Shonen uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. Um, and I think, uh, what was I going to say? This just came out. I don't know if they're planning on releasing a new album soon, but I'll look into that for next week. We got Bandmade falling from three to number nine with Unleash. So it fell three mm. spots. Unleash is holding on. And uh, the other song, while Influencer, is just like two spots away from the top 10, by the way. Um, they're Dude. like so close. It's like number 12. So oh. awesome. We'll That's so crazy. Made. Like, Influencer is so good. Mm. I think Influencer was better than Unleash, but I guess not. I guess Unleash is not kidding. <laughs> well, Unleash had a video with it. Well, I guess the, so did Influencer. Video. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> like, wait, what? I don't know. I think the video probably maybe was more appealing. Oh, the an- the anime thing was a big deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also think it's just it's the title track. You know, title tracks yeah. generally get a little bit more uh, exposure. I think Influencer is the better song though too. Um, Lisa dropped Dude. number one from seven to eight. Go ahead, Wave. What were you gonna say? Uh, I was just gonna say the both of those songs were the most surreal to me live 
because oh yeah like that was the first like full collection of songs that came out since i became a bandmate fan yeah. so like just seeing them play that live after doing the group reactions with you guys and stuff it was just it really hit me emotionally that like holy crap look at all this stuff that's happened <laughs> yeah. i mean it's really special that the four of us got together and we're you know we talk about this stuff every week like hell yeah oh, i really appreciate it hell yeah man I do too. It's uh, it's crazy that we haven't we haven't missed a single Sunday. I don't think. Oh, well, except for one, and then we redid it on That's Wednesday. That's insane. Yeah. I was like, we're on a roll. It's the most consistent <laughs> I've been with anything in my life ever. Yeah, probably me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't. This song is really good, guys. I really recommend people to check this out. El Garden had came back, and it had been like seven something plus years, and they came back with some new music. Uh, it went up one spot to number seven. This is a great song. I checked it out. It's really good. Uh, Ray from One Eye Close is a fan of them. He knows uh, some of these members. And I believe they were on hiatus for a very long time. I can't remember the actual year, but it was like seven plus years. It's actually a pretty good song. It's very nostalgic. It's really good. I highly recommend people check it out. Uh, one OK Rock is falling slowly, a spot every single week. They're down to number <laughs> six. <laughs> Oh, speaking of One OK Rock, Yayoka just met them backstage at their concert. Oh, wow. That's That's awesome. pretty sweet. She posted a picture with them. She should uh, fill in on drums if the drummer ever gets sick. <laughs> One <Yeah>. OK Rock. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we have Vondi. Vondi also dropping. So these songs have been at the top three for a while are finally dropping. Vondi's still the only thing I haven't really checked out from this top ten list. It's the last one I still need to... Go check out. What about you guys? Have you checked out anything from Vondi? Just this week I heard Vondi for the first time. What do you think about him? Why should we check him out? He has a cool voice. Ah, the voice reminded me of something, and I can't... Uh, my brain is not working this morning, obviously. But, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why should we check him out? All right. And, <laughs> don't know how to answer that. <laughs> I'll, I'll have an answer for you guys next week. I'll check it, it was, out this week. It was smushed with the, uh, between 23 other songs in my live stream. So. <clears throat> oh, man. Dude, I don't know how you do that. Anyways, I'm going to digress really quickly if we get into that. But anyways, next. <laughs> the next top four. You ready? I, we just announced it all at once. You know who took over the top four. Otto. Oh. <laughs> we have Never heard song. of her. Tell me about Otto. <laughs> Rising 12 places. 12 places that come at number four. Whoa, again with another banger. This time is a collaboration with Sheena Ringo. Music, lyrics, and MIDI uh, was done by Sheena for the movie um, Kata Sagashi, which means searching for a body. That's dark. I haven't heard this song yet. So, yet. Then we got Rebellion by Otto. Number three stayed right there, didn't move. Number two, we have Otto staying right there at number two. Didn't move <laughs> back. Like, number one, we have Otto for Top Musica. So my question for you all is, do you think that she will beat her own songs <laughs> with the top ten <laughs> Yes, I do. Yeah. I think there's a better chance that she knocks everybody else out of the top ten before yeah. she knocks her own songs out of the top ten. Yeah, but, you think uh, that's going to happen? The only reason people are dropping is because she keeps putting more songs in. I, top music has been at number one for a while. Though. For a while. You know what? I, I got to say, if if she comes out with like another eight songs, I'm dead serious. We're going to have an auto top ten separate. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm like, here's the auto top ten list. And just assume that it's ahead of the other top line list. <laughs> She's all, also <laughs> dominating the covers chart, isn't she? The top three yeah. spots. I'm scared to look at that chart. <laughs> okay, yeah, I no. heard Chainsaw Aster Man. Isn't Asterism killing it over there? Asterism, yeah. Yeah. Our, our, yeah. And I think Sokin and Aro was number one last week. I, uh, Otto was on there with Crime and Punishment, though. I think maybe number two, if I recall correctly. Oh, okay, cool. So, so just to give you guys a look, by the way, you can join our Discord server to submit any entries we might have missed, and uh, Simno adds them. Uh, we go through them and put them on here. Uh, again, shout out to Simno for putting this together, man. Here is uh, here are the people knocking at the door, though. We have Bish with Sayonara still, still hanging there at number 11 and Bandmade right underneath it with Influencer and another Sim song. So those three are pretty, well, I guess uh, Bish is more close. Holy crap. Yeah. 
I so, haven't seen this uh, little spreadsheet yet. Yep. Science. Science. <laughs> <laughs> Science or math? It's a, it's a great explanation. <laughs> a combination. <laughs> a combination. <laughs> Uh, be mathematical science. Man, that's cool. Science. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't math the part of science? <laughs> of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what half it. It's what half of Twitter says about everything, anyway. So, <laughs> can we, we say we mathematical science? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So we have the cover list coming up here, and Asterism, we know, is going to just destroy this. Number 10, it did drop two spots. And number 9, we got Wagaki Band going up a spot with their cover. Mm, nice. Another new Vocaloid cover by Wagaki Band, Marshall Maximizer, uh, Hiragi Magnetite. I haven't checked that out yet. Have, have you guys checked out any of these covers by Wagaki Band? No, haven't heard them yet. All right. Um, down one spot from uh, seven to eight, we have more asterism. We've talked about this every week. They've been holding <laughs> the charts for a while. We got Polaris by asterism for My Hero Academia. Still holding strong. They're just dropping a spot here and there. Probably made room for another artist to come in. We got more asterism. Check out these asterism covers. You know They're in the top ten for a reason. They must be really good. I do. I'm seriously just going to make a stream just checking out all the new Asterism covers and auto covers. Just do a, we should just do a cover reaction stream, guys. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just going to give you guys a little insight right now. The next poll that's going up on our Patreon is going to be from the top ten. So. Oh, nice. good, good. Nice. Very likely an Asterism song. That's a good idea because like, I feel like every week I'm like, no, I haven't heard that yet. I've been yeah. I've been trying to do that a little bit more lately, but we haven't been around to record reactions. But we've got some. We're, we got we're doing them today, guys. We're doing them today. Yeah. Number three, we got Wagaki Ban, and number two, we have Otto again. Crime and Punishment has stayed right there at two, and number one, Wagaki Ban with Phony cover that's been holding number one for a very long time. Wow. So congrats to those bands that got on there for the covers. Again, guys, if you have other covers, they all count. You know, <laughs> just submit them. Any covers of anything. That happened in this past year go ahead and sp submit those uh those links not Sweet. that they're gonna beat any of these because they have ridiculous they keep racking in views every day oh. <laughs> all right that's the top 10 and just a quick question i forgot to ask i think we're gonna be setting up another discord challenge thing are we do you have anything on that champ any news on that uh, not yet. There was a an idea brought to my attention a few days ago, which I am still mulling over if I if I want to go with it. But uh, I'll bring it to you guys this week, and we'll decide something by yeah. by next week's stream. So make sure you join that Discord yeah. server, uh, guys and guys. We do have all the news topics in there, so you can uh, submit any news that you might think we were going to forget or something like that. Or if you want to add to the top ten, you can submit your your links there, and then we look over those. And we also have tabs for each individual band that um, updates with their tweets or Instagram. If we are able to get the links to get them on there, if you see a band that's missing from there, let us know. We'll add them also on there. And you want to go ahead and tell them about the Patreon, uh, champ. I do, I do. Uh, we have a Patreon, and if you go over to it, it's patreon.com slash guys. You get all kinds of cool shit, like group reactions and early and access to our exclusive Discord server, and, you know, we post updates there and stuff like that sometimes. Also, our newest feature is that if you're on the $10 tier, you can... Um, Every other week, send out a shout out potential, right? Where uh, I pull a, a band and song out of a hat, and we will give them a shout out on the stream um, during the top ten, which is going to happen next week, uh, and then again two weeks after that, and continue going that way. So, uh, anyway, uh, yeah. So this this week we actually have like a bunch of reactions to go to. So if you're going to sign up for the Patreon, this is actually a really good time because we're making up for some missed time while everybody was traveling, and uh, a bunch of stuff's going to get uploaded very soon. So uh, yeah, man, it's cool. patreoncom slash guys. Yeah. Just just to add. On November, the first Sunday of November, I will be announcing the winners for the Hazuki pick and for the band-made pictures and the band-made Canva. Um, cool. I was just going to ask about that. Out. Sweet. Ryan, did you have anything? 
<laughs> you looked like you're dying. I'm so fucking tired. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all good, man. I'm I'm fucking old and it's showing. I can't do what I used to do. Well, I saw you drag the mic over, so I was like, I was like, maybe he's gonna say something. <laughs> <laughs> Do something. He's alive. I gotta do something. I have to go get a drink of water. I'm like, I could just fucking go to sleep right now. <laughs> you should have fell asleep on stream. I would have been laughing. It would have been hilarious if you fell asleep in that chair. I would have been. I would have fucking lost my shit. I was like, I'm like, this podcast is fucking over. <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I it. think all like the the three of us could have all fallen asleep except Alan. Yeah, he I would just be fine. doing the podcast by himself. I, I feel like I today. did it by myself today. <laughs> no, yeah, no. thank you all for being here. I'm sorry, I'm such an idiot. I can't remember anything. Uh, uh, it's, but anyways, I hope you guys <laughs> enjoyed the podcast. We're gonna get going, guys. We're gonna go react to songs. Do you guys have any final words? Jesus Christ. We're gonna give Ryan sunglasses with eyeballs yeah. on. <laughs> We're not taking questions today, guys. Sorry. We'll, we'll do those next Sunday. We don't. We need Ryan alive for the bandmate concert, so we're gonna get going, guys. All right. <laughs> all right. We love you all. Man. You guys stay. You stay awesome. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. See you.